the greatest common factor and least common multiple. For these first few examples, we're going to be finding the greatest common factor between the two numbers. Now, to find the greatest com common factor, you want to first find the factors of the two numbers. So when you're just given numbers like 54 and 45, you just find the factors. So it's 1 and 54 and 2 and 27. Uh, 3 and 18, <laughs> 6 and 9, and then if you keep checking, you should find that those are all the factors, because if you keep going, the rest you get are decimal numbers, so they're not even factors. Now, 45. So we'd have 1 and 45. We have 5, or sorry, 3 and 15. We have 5 and 9. And if you check all the numbers in between 5 and 9, you find that none of them are factors. So your only factors are 3, 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, 45. Now what we want to do is we want to find the greatest one that they both have. Well, they both have 1, but there's obviously one bigger than that. They both have uh, 9. Well, they both have a 3. And that's it. That's the only ones they have in common. So the biggest one they both have in common is 9. So the GCF, or the greatest common factor, is 9. For this next example, we have 35n squared m and 21m squared n. Okay, so the first thing is we look for the numbers that they, or the, sorry, the variables they both have in common. Okay, so they both have 1n, so that means there's going to be 1n in the final greatest common factor. They both have at least 1m, so that means there's going to be an m in the final answer. So we're going to have an M, and now we have to find the numbers. We find the numbers the same way that we did before. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, 35. So 35 would be 1 and 35, 5 and 7, and those would be all of your common Factor, or all of your factors of 35. So the next one that we have to do is 21. So 21, we have 1 and 21, and we have 3 and 7. And those would be all of your factors of 21. So if we're looking for the greatest common factor, um, 1 and 7 are the only common factors, so 7 is the greatest common factor, so 7 is the other part of our answer. So my final answer, the GCF, is going to be equal to 7M times N. Final answer. For this third example, we have 66XY and 30X squared Y. So we start with our variables. We have an X and an x squared, so that means there is one x in common. We have a y and a y, so there is one y in common. So we're going to have an xy in our final answer. And then we look at our numbers, 66. We get 1 times 66. We get 2 times 33. We get 3 times 22. And we get 6 and 11. And those are all of our factors of 66. And then we look at 30. So we would have 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, uh, 5 and 6. And those would be all of our factors of... 30. So now we look for the greatest one that they both have. 
So they both have a 1, they both have a 2, they both have a 3, they both have a 6, and 6 is the biggest one they both have. So your final answer, the greatest common factor of 66xy and 30x squared y is 6xy. Final answer. For these next examples, we want to actually find the opposite of that, which is the least common multiple. So to find the least common multiple, it's easiest, I think, to like set up a little table for yourself where you're just finding multiples of each number. What a multiple is, is what you multiply times, what you get once you multiply a number times another number. So if I'm looking for multiples of 15, I want to multiply 15 by 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 5, 6, and you can keep going. All right, so that's what I'm going to start with. 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. 15 times 3 is 45. 15 times 4 is 60. 15 times 5 is 75. 15 times 6 is 90. And so on. So you kind of see how it works. Just keep on adding 15 or multiplying that number by 15. And now I want to find 20, because that's my other number. So when I'm doing 20, multiples of 20, 1 times 20 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 20 times 3 is 60. 20 times 4 is 80. And 20 times 5 is 100. 20 times 6 is 120, and so on. Okay, so now we're looking for the one that they both have in common. The smallest one, the least one, that they both have, which would be 60. So my least common multiple is 60. For the next example, we have 18xy squared and 15y cubed. Okay, so now in this case, we're finding the greatest, or the, sorry, the least common multiple. What we need to do with the variables is whatever the biggest one is, that's the one we have to have. So since we have y squared and y cubed, there has to be a y cubed, because that's the biggest one. And since we have an x and no x, then we need to have that x in there, because it's the least one that they can both possibly have if we're multiplying them out. So we are going to have an xy cubed in our answer. And then the numbers are the same. So we have 18, we have 15, and I'll set up a little table. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's start with that and see if that gets us what we need. And we can continue on if we need to. So we'll start with 18. 18 times 1 is 18. 18 times 2 is 36. 18 times is 54. 18 times 4 is 72. Now let's go and try the 15s. 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. 15 times 3 is 45. 15 times 4 is 60. So we have to keep going because we have nothing in common yet. So 5. 15 times 5 is 75. 15 times 6 is 90. Okay, so now let's see. 18 times 5 is also 90. So now we have a commonality, so we can stop there. We have a least common multiple of 90. So we put the 90 with the xy cubed, and my least common multiple is 90 x y cubed. Final answer. And the last example, we have 18 m squared, 24 n m. So we're going to start by recognizing that my biggest uh, m is an m squared, and my biggest n is I have an n in this one but none in the other, so m squared n is going to be in my least common multiple. And then I need to find my factors. or sorry, my multiples.
So, 18 times 1 is 18, 18 times 2 is 36, 18 times 3 is 54, 18 times 4 is 72, and 18 times 5 is 90, and we can continue on if we need to, but let's see what 24 has. 24 times 1 is 24, 24 times 2 is 48, 24 times 3 is 72, and if I'm watching what I'm doing, I notice that they both have a 72, so I can stop there. I don't need to do the rest of them if I don't want to. You can, but you can stop there. So I found that 72 is least common multiple, so my final answer is 72m squared n. Final answer. So those are your notes over greatest common factor and least common multiple. Go through the practice problems. Make sure you can do both of these. They will come in handy later on when you start solving problems. Uh, hit do the, So make sure you complete the practice problems, and then you should be ready for your quiz over the material.